So tell me, how can I help you in this short time that we have today? Okay, the short time I got, I got questions for you. My my children, of course, is like try to act up, act a fool for me. Now, what's happening? Do you know that I'm on the first page still? Let's assume you've got your SAM registration. Now, you said your company does fingerprint and second chance housing. Yes. All right. Um, so go ahead. So now you've got your SAM registration. Now what? What well, now? What is how? How do I go to the next step about applying? for those grants and those uh, funding that's out there for my business because I I don't know where to, you know, I, I haven't finished reading your book. I'm going to read it, you know, I'm going to continue reading it to uh -huh. see if that does uh, apply to my business, like fingerprinting, which is a level two uh, fingerprinting, okay. uh, which, you know, the government has to have in order to do what they do. And the housing, it comes in, you know, people always need housing. So um, that's that's what I'm at now. All right. So let's so again now remember this. One of the things that I do is I teach people how to win contracts, not get grants. So that grant is a separate issue. Um, okay. I, I do Maybe have some websites in the book that reference you know where you can go to start looking for grants. But I mean that's very simple. Grants.gov, and you know those are steps that you could be t doing right now. Like, and you know a lot of people want to jump in and get registered on Sam. But there's other steps that you could be doing in the process to learn about your market and who are the people that you should be targeting. Even when it comes to grants, you need to know who's giving out those grants, right? So you can go to grants.gov today and start searching for grants for what you want to do. Um, when it comes to housing, I know, like, for example, where I'm at right now, presently, I have, you know, properties and stuff is in Clewiston, Florida. And that's, you know, considered uh, rural housing. So rural, they have like the USDA does funding for housing in our area. So, you know, you have, but, but again, you have to know that stuff about the areas that you want to work in. So based on looking at grants, who's giving out the types of grants that you need? Okay. Right. See, and so you can't answer that question. So those oh, are yeah, things I, that you need to find out okay. first. Let's find out, you know, first of all, obviously, if you're looking at housing, there's several places online on grants.gov that tell you about housing grants. Even though I don't teach grants, I have written grants in the past. I just don't teach it to people. But it's the same process. Who is actually issuing the grants? What are the requirements of that grant? Um, the grants are very specific, have very specific, narrow criteria, but what I like about them is it is because it is specific and narrow, you can meet the objective. So it tells you exactly it's a, you know, it's a point scoring system and based on, you know, uh, checking these boxes, you can get so many points per question, per section, you know, per response. So that's the beauty of grants for me is that if I know what they're asking for on the grant, then, I mean, you can go out and, and put together uh, that information or bring someone along that helps you increase your score or meet those point criteria. Uh, but again, going back to, let's look at some of the basics. Who are, who, who is issuing the types of grants that you want? Do you have a, a grant response that you're looking at? And, you know, I would be more inclined to say, hey, Eric, I have a grant in front of me, right, that I'm looking at. It's asking me for X, Y, Z, you know, A, B, C, how do I meet that objective? How do I meet that criteria? That's where, you know, it would come along, would be very helpful to talk to me or someone, you know, like myself. At that point is when you actually have something in front of you that you can go through, you've read, and, you you know, maybe it seems confusing or there's something you don't understand. That's when okay. I think it'd be very helpful to come to me. Like the SAM registration stuff is pretty, you know, straightforward. A lot of people can do that. A lot of people have gone through that process. So, we're, you know, if someone's were looking on your screen, they could pretty much, you know, help you walk through that. In fact, SAM, um, you could go on the SAM helpline and call them and they could probably walk you right through it, to be honest with you. Okay. You know, I have and I and I and I put that phone number on one of the websites. But, yeah, you can go through call a SAM help desk. Um, and I think it's FSD. Dot gov, I believe is the website. I'll check it. Yeah, it's fsd.gov, Federal Service Desk. You can go right there, and from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you can 
do a live chat session and someone can go ahead and, and walk you through that. A lot of people get caught up on that, Sam, but right now, you know, what I what I want to do, because again, you know, I really want to help people succeed. I want to help people start winning contracts. I want to help people accomplish their objectives. I'm looking, mm -hmm. you know, two or three steps above, uh, a bit okay. past Sam. So now, okay, you've got Sam, now what do we do? You know, now I sh you should be identifying who are the agencies that are actually issuing grants for the types of services that you want to provide. And that could be FEMA. I don't know if maybe FEMA is offering that, but at the same time, you know what, do not, do not close the doors to looking at contracts to offer the same services. Okay. 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 And yes, yes. I mean, I, I guess I, I never really, um, um, thought about contracts. I'm thinking contracts and grants are, you know, in the same family, no. not that, they are separate, no. but you know, totally separate. they are separate. Yeah, but don't, you know, I, um, you know, one of my clients right now that I'm working with presently as a consultant, I, you know, I was looking at some projects for them and I ran across projects where they were asking for uh, housing for homeless. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's kind of, you know, and so that, to me that falls along with what you're talking about, second chance housing. So, yeah. you know, you could have easily, um, well, let me take away the word easily. You could have um, actually went out and found places for them um, to reside in term, you know, in the form of a contract as opposed to a grant. Yes. You understand? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah so, so don't so so don't close. You know the don't don't do not totally throw out the idea of doing contracts for the same services. A lot of people want to go to grants, but grants are a one-time thing. Sometimes they're just to accomplish an objective, whereas contracts are ongoing. They're continuous. There's history behind them, and if you become the incumbent and start doing a good job, you know you'll kind of stay in that loop, and you'll you know that's something that will be ongoing more of a, a permanent type solution. Whereas a grant, yeah. it's just like a one-time gig, you know, you get the grant um, and then, you know, maybe it goes away, depends on who's in office, depends on who's the party, you know, depend mm -hmm. on whether or not they're, you know, they're funding that today. But contracts, those are, are more stable. They're more consistent across the board they're in, in long term. Yeah. Okay. So let's, so yeah. let's do this. So, I, you know, I would encourage you to do two things. One is, you know, reach, go to FSD, go to the Federal Service Desk, let them walk you through helping get your SAM registration completed. And then two is start doing some research on, you know, the grants. And then also, you know, find out about some of the contracts um, and the opportunities that exist within the actual two areas that you want to focus on. Okay. Uh, listen, get, uh, when you when you go through this um, SAM to get the contract where it tells you to register, Mm -hmm. um, it puts you into like a, a system and those people that are actually looking for someone that fits my criteria for those contracts. You know, I remember that um, the immigration people had closed their office and they were looking, scattering around for people to do the, the stuff. So my thing is, would they contact me, like like Department of Education, they contact me and say, these are the things that are out there. Once you put no. your information in the system, that so, doesn't happen. You so, actually have so, to do No, you got you have to do business development. That yeah. happens, but it's very rare, far and in between. It's not something that you, you can bank on. Um, okay. Yes, they they do market research, and sometimes they'll reach out to you know people that have these particular NAX codes. But you can't um, to be successful in this. You can't be passive. You have to actually do actively mm -hmm. do business development and market research. Okay. Yeah. Market so, research. Yeah, you've got to you have to do those things. You have to go after those people, find out who they are, and reach out to them. Okay. All right. So let's. Okay. I've got to run. I hope I was able to answer some questions for you, you on are. the short time that we have. Thank, thank you so much. Hey, thank you no, so much. No problem. Thank you. I hope to talk to you soon when you give me some good news. All right. Okay. All right. Take it. Thanks. Thank Take care. You.